Now, what, now the ropemen, you were a ropeman underground, but you were an iron worker above ground. Well, they had a lot of guys that couldn't be rope iron workers. They, they didn't, couldn't stand the height. You had Sherry's crew, Mark Sherry's crew, was mostly did all the mine work. And then when we first, we had Macaulay, he was the other mine boss, and I was on his crew, and there was no, nothing going on. In the early part of the 50s when they're just doing mine work and that, I was on his gang. There was four ropemen down and three up on that gang. Then when we started all the Kelly and everything, then I was put on the rope on most part on uh, Bert Fellows' iron worker crew. Now didn't you have a one night to have to go up there to the diamond and make a change out on a shiv wheel? One time when a cage was over the top? That was a, that was the granite mountain. What happened that night? <laughs> the engineer thought it was on down the down the mine, it was on surface. So he pulled the cage he up. He got over three spells and he went choo choo. <laughs> so was that in the middle of winter? No, it was it was in the summertime. But the thing is, this one here, a couple of mornings it was up on top up there. The deck was up there. Meaning meaning what? The deck was clear up to the shiv wheels? Well, it was up straight almost hanging straight out like that. The deck was up underneath the skip was hanging out like this. Oh it almost ready to go over the top. Yeah. So Jamie, what? they put one over the top down the Emma. It was a wooden head frame. And he came up. That was an air hoist, too. And he had so much speed coming up. I, I don't know what happened, but the next thing, the cage and the, the and the skip and the cap were all sitting up against the wall of the engine. <laughs> Broke the wheel and everything. So, so... so what happens when that when you what was a have you ever done it on a cold winter night? No, but the skips used to hang up in the on the head frame up there. What they'd be so cold, you know, up there, and then they'd come up out of the mine with all that hot rock and steam, and then they'd go into the they had rubber tires on them decks. On the Kelly? Yeah. On the instead of they had rubber tires that run up and down. and said that them guides, you know, they had the guides, but they had the rubber tires. And if they pulled it up and they hung it up there for a few minutes or they waited till they, they didn't have the other skip loaded it might stay up there for maybe half a then it won't come down because of the ice yeah so then you do you take the rope and go up there once in a while you'd have to go up there there was a there's a platform up there so you, there's two platforms you can go right up there one's right level with the top of the decks the skip you have to put a come along on and pull it loose, pull it down. When it broke free from the ice, then it was fine. Well, have you ever had to get up there when there were men in the cage? No, they never did. They, they never did pull anybody over with men in it. I went down here though, and they were in the deck. There were four decks of men right down here, hanging around the 3200. They had a. The top deck was right there, where we come in, opened up, and come in into there through the shaft panel. And Hammerhead Hogan, he was a boss here. He was in the top deck, and there was four other guys in there with him. And he crawled out of the deck and out on. Then down below the next, they could get to the next deck and got them guys out. But there wasn't too much slack cable, so all you had to do was just tell them guys that we're gonna move you, you know. So you give them three slow bells and watch the cable. And, and it's funny when it, it's an awful thing because I was on one when we went in the woods, and it it drops you for just a second. It scares you. <laughs> you ain't shit. It scares you. <laughs> but then when we got the slack out of it, you know, then we took it to the next day. We were we had the cage too. We got on that one and went to the next the next closest station, and they brought that cage down and they didn't take them guys no farther from there because we had to take that back up and check that cable and see what that cable was all right. Well, did you ever have to go from extreme heat to extreme cold and do a job? Oh. The bottom of the mountain con, four o'clock in the morning, went out and lowered motors, motor of three cars. That was just take four hours by the time you had to put the long drum on and get it done. Come up, Put on the original, take off them clothes, mine clothes, and put on. But one time we were down the mine doing something, and I don't know what the hell. I think it was at the Leonard. 
we had to go up into Leonard because the engineer said he thought he saw a piece of the wheel fly off. Well, it wasn't. It was a big chunk of tar that had built up. But here we are. And Barrett come down and he said, we got to go down to Leonard. He said, there might be a broken wheel. Okay. That mine close on. <laughs> so, <laughs> was it cold up there? Yeah, hey, you bet. They broke a wheel in November at the Leonard. I just come home from bowling. Every other Thursday night, I used to stop and porch up John's and get a couple of porch chops for me and you. And go home and have a snack, you know. That night, I said, well, you want a sandwich? She said, no, okay. So I come straight home. I just cleared the door and the phone was ringing. I said, don't answer it. <laughs> you got to answer it. John there? Yeah, this is Ray Barrett. Let me talk to him. Say, yeah. Oh, well, did you read you? Get on your winter clothes. He said, there was a broken wheel at the Leonard's. Okay, boss. Bert, fellows, there was a four or five roping off our crew. Down we go. <coughs> when that wheel broke, it cut the cable right off. Two, cut it right in half. They were lowering sand down the Leonard. They had what they called a sand pass to fill in like the slimes, but they were using sand at the Leonard. Where they had to taken out the workings, they were putting sand in its place. Anyway, that thing went right to the 1200 before the dogs were caught. She tore guides out and everything else with all that weight and the cable following it. No torches allowed in the shaft. Why is that? Well, you catch the mine off fire. So Sherrick's crew, they're down there <laughs> on the 1200. Oh, that's cold too. Hacksaws and the cable cutter cutting that cable up into pieces. And we're up on that wheel. We got the wheel down, and the machinists had to come out. They had to take the bearing blocks off and everything. The only thing we had up there was a 100 watt light bulb to keep your hands warm. And it's in the November. Whoa. We get the wheel down, so it's time for breakfast. We've been up there since 9 o'clock at night, had nothing. Oh, yeah, we did. That's right, I remember. I could. 2 o'clock in the morning. Bird hollered up and he says, I'm sending Gus up to Schwamigan to get sandwiches and coffee. Okay. So he takes off in the truck and we come, when we see him coming back, we head down the steps, you know. We get down there. <laughs> There's four, two or three Catholics on the crew, but the rest are all Swedes and Norwegians, you know. And what do we do? He got tuna fish sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you that was something when he went down and there's tuna fish sandwiches for the crew. But anyway, we ate and then we went back up again. And we got the wheel free. <laughs> and we had to use rigging blocks and big walking tackles to get that wheel down. There was no crane at that because it's the middle of the night. Okay, so, and they don't have a crane with a long enough boom. They had to put a boom on and that. So anyway, time to go breakfast. Oh, here we go with all the greasy overalls, that tar all over us. And up to the Schwamigan. Al had a place ready for us, Al Hoffman. He ran the Schwamigan. He steak and eggs. But before we got there, Bert says, we've been out all night on this son of a bitch. He said, I'm frozen. So am I. Okay. Right into Dazzy and Combos was a bar right above the Schwamigan Cafe. That's where the Columbia Gardens Expresso is now. That was the Schwamigan Cafe. <laughs> We're all in there having shots of beers and then walks bears. The foreman. This don't look like the Schwamigan to me. Yeah, and Bert Bear, said to him, yeah, and you were nice and warm all night in a nice warm bed, weren't you, alongside of Mary? That's his wife. <laughs> said, yeah. He said, okay. He said, I'll buy one more. Then down to that. Okay, down we had another shot in a beer. Down we went and had breakfast and right back down to Leonard again. Got the new wheel up and everything. It's about 20 minutes to four. Barrett come down. He hollered up Musa. He hollered up to us. He said, get down here. So we come down. Here comes him. We even got the new cable back on and everything. Here comes Murphy, Dick Murphy and his crew. He said, Barrett, he said to Barrett, what do you want?